Time for another surprise late night stream. Play for a little while just to wind down. If you wanna hop in and talk to me a little bit. Playing some more Final Fantasy Remake. I thought that title was very honest until I figured out it was like an episodic thing. It's like, really, this is just, you know, just Midgar. Yeah, I don't know how, uh, how exactly honest it is. It's not even really a remake. You know, it's, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like an adaptation. It's like your, it's like a new adaptation of the book or something, you know? Like, this game is to Final Fantasy VII what, like, the Lord of the Rings movies would be to the Lord of the Rings books or something like that, you know? It's totally, it's, it's very different. <laughs> I'm liking it so far, though. All right. Let's hop back in. I think we're on the train now. Business District, the Metropolitan Zone built atop the Sector 8 plate. Midgar's newest and most picturesque sector is already a cultural hub. No, oh, I didn't get to read the whole thing. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good to see you, Darkspawn. And Waylon. Alright, do I go through the door? I think I go through this door. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you hooker. And and a dude dude cooking up a batch of a smack or something here. I have to slowly walk around these boxes. N nobody notices this dude with a flower and a giant sword. And it was like, hey, uh, you know that's a massive, like gigantic thing. Hi, friend. You look like an older model. It's kind of like a super realistic face on kind of like a a really weird looking body like with skinny arms. This is a really funny looking model anyway. I just want to get home. Here's some people. Are you the one so Man, everyone's on edge. Of course they are. Hey, Cloud. I am um, that it won't be a need. You're about to unburden yourself. Don't stand like there. Yeesh. You He's got a gun on his back. This wouldn't fly in New York City, guys. <laughs> to get mad at, like, I can bump into them, do they get mad? Let's bump into her. Hey, just bumping into you, babe. This is like a pickup artist move. Bump into her. Oh, yeah. You're uh, holding up pretty well, huh? Mr. Biggs. Even after what we saw at the station and all over Sector 8? I'm a soldier. You see, my well, daughter now lives in my Sector hands are 8, still shaking. So... You get used to it. Something to look forward to. Or maybe not. Have they caught the perpetrators yet? I do like the, that they have the subtitles kind of off to the side for banter. It's actually like a good detail. It's a good, very functional detail. A little help, Cloud? Please? I can't stop thinking about it. The bomb yeah, I made shouldn't have produced an explosion that too, big. Man. It doesn't make any sense. The explosion triggered a reaction with the Mako. You said so yourself. That was my first guess, but shouldn't the reactor have fail-safes to prevent that kind of thing? Hmm. You mentioned invisible enemies back there, right? Right. Oh, no. I'm just looking for excuses for something that was clearly my own fault. So yeah, they're bringing in the drama of the um, kind of guilt for the eco-terrorism. It's something that kind of shows up later in the original game. They just kind of bring it here into this first act. I'm not sure how appropriate that is. I've, had, I've seen a couple of people comment on this. Hello, kitty. Yes, don't scratch the couch. Thank you. The terrorists who tried to kill the president? Is there nothing they I love this expositional dialogue. <laughs> Quit talking out your ass. That was really awkward. <laughs> Not good. Avalanche only cares about saving the planet. <clears throat> just, just who do you think you are? A law abiding concerned citizen. <laughs> With a oh. gun for an arm. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shh. Oh, 
in my humble opinion, that explosion was a message. A message to the bastards bleeding our planet dry. Think they got it? Heard it loud and clear? Y'all's masters? <laughs> We will not submit to intimidation or violence, but work together for peace and prosperity. That is how civilized people change the world. That's right. Yes, we're going to clap for him. This is, that is the Shinra Creed. They're getting an expositional like, we have to tell you things we already know, because you don't know. It's hard, it's hard to get around that with um, cinematic presentations like this. You have to do it all through dialogue. We should go. Right. <laughs> Does Cloud ever change his scowling expression? In the original? No. To keep it true to the original, he doesn't even have a mouth. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really hard to avoid expositional dialogue with something like this, which is just people, people doing exposition, saying things, how things are in dialogue, which they wouldn't normally do. Like, you don't... You know, two cops don't sit around talking about arrest protocols. They simply do them, right? But a lot of times when you write a cop drama, you have to have them express that so the audience knows what the heck you're doing and what they're talking about. You hear that suit? Shinra Creed, my ass. Shinra Creed. I mean, this looks great. But yeah, I don't... He has this dramatic look on his face. I'm, I'm sure he'll smile eventually. I don't know why Jesse's not making him smile. But yeah, it looks like they're bringing the the eco-terrorism guilt in a little earlier. a lot more bearable. If it helps, think of it as an initiation right. How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm not There's such a thing as playing too hard to get. So, here we've got a wireframe model of the great city of Midgar, complete with massive steel Again, they're going to talk about stuff they already know. It's for our benefit. Atop which stands a shining beacon of civilization. The whole system is sustained by the Mako reactors, which feed the insatiable appetites of the public. The train will be passing through an ID checkpoint shortly. You know, you could have done this like a voiceover, probably. The train's route. As you can see, it'll take us around this main pillar. Look, we're about halfway through it now. They've set up a checkpoint here to scan the IDs of all passengers heading in and out. Date of birth, residential status, criminal history. All that and more is automatically cross-referenced in their databases. Public security wouldn't have it any other way. Heads up. Yeah, and this is the part where you have to do the IDs on the train. These are impeccable. They did it a little bit less awkwardly, I think, in the original. But uh, they really felt like they had to spell things out here. Take a good look. It's because of that great big pizza in the sky that people down there got to struggle to survive. Shinra sucks up Mako while the soil turns to dust, the air fills with smog, and the flowers die. Then leave and don't look back. <sighs> that's what's always worked for me. <sighs> well, that's all well and good. If you're only out for yourself. But the folks down there don't have the luxury of choice, you know. Yeah, something to keep in mind. I think I've talked to a couple people about this. I've seen people saying this in the comments. Like this train, I suppose. You know, you don't want these... You know, your main characters here are terrorists. And you don't want the audience to be not on their side. So you really have to spell out like that they're they're eco terrorists, right? Which was a thing in the nineties. And they you know, they're really trying to make them more sympathetic. You also have to keep in mind the original game was made before September eleventh, two thousand one. This one is made after September eleventh, two thousand one. It's a different world with different attitudes. And I, I I can understand, you know, you wanting to play it a little bit on the safe side as far as terrorism goes, because terrorism has become a much bigger issue since then. When I first saw Jessie, I thought she was Tifa in disguise. I think Tifa's boobs are bigger. 
Barrett's so melodramatic, but he's really melodramatic in the original too, so I'm okay with it. And one step closer to a brighter future. Hell yeah! Guys! Lower your voices, huh? People are listening. Oh, God. Right. Ah. <laughs> now get some r, &R. You've earned it. Just be ready for the next mission, all right? Hmm. <laughs> Remember in the original, it felt so tense, like getting through the train and everything and everything blinking so? red. Uh, felt more intense than the sequence. Seven. You know, where Tifa works? Don't keep her waiting. She'll worry. You're getting expositional dialogue. Where Tifa works. He would already know that, right? But maybe he doesn't because, like, his memory's not working. But, you know, uh, Barrett wouldn't say that if he assumed Cloud knew. You know. Uh, so that's... That's this kind of dialogue. It's, it's something that, like... Um, it takes a lot of skill to write expositional dialogue that isn't really awkward like that. That doesn't make people scratch their heads and be like, why would they say that? Um, it takes it takes a lot of skill. And actually, I think one of the things that, um, you know, George Lucas tends to do it a lot. And you, you get it a lot in pulps, in the old pulps, which influenced George Lucas. You just do it this way because it's the fastest way to just communicate information. Um in like older movies and, and in Pulp Fiction, you just say the way things are. And uh, when he made those original three Star Wars movies, he had people like Harrison Ford rewriting dialogue, you know, changing things on set, you know, giving him feedback, and then he'd rewrite the stuff um, just to to make it a little bit less awkward, just to hone it in better. And uh, I think with the prequels, there was less of that. So there was more of that awkward dialogue where... People are just a little too direct with it, and it doesn't feel natural. You have to be a little bit more indirect, I think, with this kind of dialogue. See, again, this they're like, why do we have to live in the slums? There's trash everywhere. You probably wouldn't, like, if you lived here, you wouldn't say that. Like, you wouldn't run into two gangbangers in Compton and have them, like, talk about, why do we have to be gangbangers? I don't like, you know, they just would exist as they're in their own state. The slums. I always liked this about the original game, where you had like this upper city and then this lower city. I always thought that was a really interesting dichotomy. That's why they wrote them differently in this compared to them, yeah. Good point. Terrorism was just a mock of thought back then. Now it's very real and this thing can't be taken lightly anymore. And it's, people have grown up after that, you know, and it's just part of they're thinking where you know i mean i <laughs> some of you guys may have been born after 9 11 now that i'm thinking about it i was a freshman in college mako was the lifeblood of the planet yeah the hell it is i remember i still bought slayer's new album when it came out that day though posters i tear them down and they're back up inside of an hour like i've got nothing better to do faces look great in this game all that steel work Trying to tell me that's not progress? Whoa. Oh, he's hallucinating. What the? You okay, buddy? <laughs> Mako junkie, huh? Figures. A Mako junkie. Ooh, the plot thickens. You again. Ghosts. I don't know what these ghosts are going to do. I don't know what this is about. But I got to find out, guys. Okay, can't go that way yet. This is a pretty good realization of the slums, I got to say. I really actually liked the aesthetic approach to, like, the slums. Gate broken. Fiends in area. Exercise caution. No reason to check it out. Not my problem. Not my problem. You don't want to mess with the monsters in here. Move along. Beans. We'll just go there. Stop Stop looking for boxes to smash. Oh, here we go. It's mega, Megaton. I mean, the slums. Seventh Heaven. 
Great power metal band, Seventh Heaven. I got to see them open for Blind Guardian. Can I go up these steps? Closed. What the? That's where I work. No freaking way. Put that fire out, idiot. Watch some TV. I was there yesterday. Cyberpunk dystopias have to include lots of broken TVs everywhere for some reason. All CRTs. Why did people blow it up? The eco terrorists wanted to blow it up. Oh look, I can't even look to the right right now. They're just they're directing you straight towards her. Here she is. Her boobs are still big, guys. Those are at least D's. I don't know what the boob controversy was all about. That's right, Angel. I Welcome am. back. <laughs> Have you been a good girl? Yeah, I picked up a teacup. Oh, you did, did you? Well, well. <laughs> I was seven when 9 11 happened. I remembered all the teachers in school. Where'd you get that? I can't remember the last time I saw a real one. <laughs> A real flower. Here you go, babe. How sweet. When did you get so thoughtful? A guy can change. It has been five years. Huh? I need to talk to Barrett. Right. Come on in. By the way, girls still like it if you give them flowers, guys. You can give them flowers for no reason. They'll like it. Don't worry about all that silliness. Daddy's here and he's not going anywhere tonight. Now turn that thing off and let's get you to bed, huh? Yeah, yeah, your money. Ask Tifa. She takes care of all that. Uh, this bar is literally the size of my kitchen. And I don't know if that means I have a big kitchen or it's a small bar. What you doing scaring my daughter like that? Daddy says never talk to strangers. That's right, girl. Don't ever talk to right, honey. I do say that. What a good girl you are remembering daddy's lessons. <laughs> you know what else good girls do? They go to bed on time. Come on. But I'm not tired. I want to talk some more, Daddy. Yeah, Luke, if the CRT has a special glow. Just this once. There's something about it. I mean you turn it off and there's like an after image what on it. I get you? My she has red eyes. I'm still waiting on it. That's weird. <sighs> Right. About that. We should talk outside. <sighs> um, Daddy? Did the people who died all return to the planet? Of course. Here we go. Before we get on to money. There's an empty apartment in a place just down the road. It's nothing fancy, but I was thinking you could stay there for now. The landlady's a big friend of the cause, so you wouldn't even have to pay rent. Sound good? Sure does. Thanks. <laughs> Follow me then. How was it up on the plate? It was chaotic. Sorry for dragging you into all this. It was wrong of me to put you in danger like that. I promise I won't do it again. Dangerous part of the job. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I'll try not to. Always happy to help stick it to Shimmer. It's like some banter and you get to walk through the set piece here. So, you make nice with everyone? As much as I could, all things considered. Maybe not enough for them. Good. You had me worried. You're not exactly a people person. I'll give you that. It's like, yeah, we're just walking around the giant sword. I saw Sector 8 on the news. It was like a war zone. The news is just another Shinra mouthpiece. She's still... Whatever lies Shinra what tells him to. to so and she's still wearing a pretty skimpy outfit here. It was. Oh. Not really set up for combat. You know, those, those thigh highs. And a, and and a leather are, miniskirt. Good old Stargazer Heights. You're on the second floor. It's actually something I appreciate about Group Dragon Age Origins. Where I sleep. Don't have time for much else. What with Seventh Heaven and all. <laughs> so you put on the armor, it like actually looked like armor. It wasn't perfect, but like 
you know, your your girl characters other than Morgan. Morgan's robes were just like cloth d barely draped over her breasts, but everybody else just had normal armor on. I kind of appreciated that. Here's oh. <coughs> Sorry. Don't worry. I already told the landlady about you. You did? Yes? Skimpy outfits and bartender do go oh, hand in hand. I mean, I told her I had a friend looking for a place to stay. Especially in Vegas. Was that too much? No. It's fine. And this? That one's, uh... Know what? It's getting late. I'll introduce you tomorrow. Oh, uh, can I go in your room? Sit out a little afraid to sleep alone with this giant sword. Guess I'll go in here. That's the end of this sequence. Going to bed alone. Oh no! It's oh my! Better, <laughs> She's coming in with to me. Get you through the night. If you want anything else, we can always there get it. There is one thing. My money. You guys owe me two thousand. Remember? I do. And we'd love to settle up, especially since this was your first job for us, but... That's it? Sorry. We spent the rest preparing for the mission. That really is it. But not for long. I'm collecting money for filters tomorrow, so I can pay you after. Imagine doing all that work for like $2,000. And you're sure about that? Of course. As long as you help, that is. It's like early Wait, game appropriate amount of money. I have to pay you for that, too. Never mind. No, two thousand's enough. That's what we agreed on, so that'll be the price. So for me to do that job, it'd be like me, at least fifteen hundred thousand dollars. Another hundred thousand dollars when it was done. <laughs> I'll see you bright and early at the bar then. Thanks again for everything. Sleep tight, <sighs> bro. You let a pretty face not give you your money. Look, there's just bathroom stalls. Are these just bathroom stalls? That's what they look like. It's like a little apartment with some. Bathroom stalls in it. Yeah, 2K doesn't seem appropriate for eco bombing a city, Zach. Guess it's time for introductions. Especially with Gil. Gil's basically Yen, you know? <laughs> it's like, I've got 20 bucks for this job. Woo! Ooh, that is noisy, neighbors. Hmm. Snoring. Can I look in my bathroom stalls? I can't. And these are slums. Looks like they're made out of old cubicles and stuff. Hey, you okay in there? Oh. Oh, what's gonna be? Coming in. This is good tension. Oh, see, this is good. You don't. You show the reaction, but not the thing. hallucinating again this is a good descent into madness you know you start off with the you know showing things normally and then um, you just you just slowly you know you just slowly introduce the madness so as you go deeper in the story you go deeper down the levels of what's going on you get more and more view into insanity But he's not a bad guy. The landlady asked me to check on him now and then to make sure he's okay. Can I ask you to do the same? Sure. Sleep fully clothed in my battle attire. With 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 my like bolted shoulder plate on. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't mind that. I mean you can't have like perfect everything. It's kinda like how in Oblivion the characters just sleep kind of on top of their bed in their full armor. 
<laughs> you know? Actually, they don't. Like, they'll sleep without their armor, and then they get up, and their armor just, like, appears on their body. It's funny. Whoa, look at that. Wow. Oh, that was that was good. Look, look, look at this. It starts off as white, and then you, you like, move the camera, and you can see the entire thing. It's really awesome. And look, LA is full of these apartments. They just look slightly better. It's like boxes stacked on top of each other. It's called modern architecture. I can't go in there? And see that guy again? Go up on the roof. What's this? A tuft of phoenix down. It's nice music too. That's pleasant music for this uh, town made out of well, now you must be garbage. I'm Marl, your landlady. So how'd you like the place? You from up on high? I've been around. I'll bet. The blade's no got matter. to be a couple of hundred all pounds. Dude would have broken his back already. If you ever need an ear to bend, I'll yeah. you mine. It can be about anything. Even Tifa. What's she to you? He's like the a superhuman. I never had. We'll find that out later. And if you hurt her, I'll take it out of your hide. You hear me? Loud and clear. Good. Now you'd best get a move on to Seventh Heaven. She's got a head start on you and then some. Cloud's legs look longer than his upper torso it's because of the kind of the bagginess at the bottom it's actually kind of you know it's the small to accentuate like a smaller waist you're right it does look a little a little odd not like he's wearing hammer pants or something What's gonna to look around a little bit it's cool this way Some people standing around. You got a rim of play pin the tail feather on the chocobo. Is that like the new favorite pickup line? Play chin pin the tail on the chocobo is a pickup line. It's like a little funny fan service moment there. Oh wait. There we go. Hello, kitty. What's happening to the plan? Eggs and chips. <laughs> I'd like an order of eggs and chips, please. Just so you know, Marlene's still asleep. <sighs> Let's get down to business, shall we? Huh? These water filters won't replace themselves. <laughs> Although the next batch probably could, if Jesse put her mind to it. Most every home in the area has one. Folks love them because they practically eliminate the rotten egg smell. Honestly, they make us more money than this place. And it's easy money, too. We bring new filters, collect the old ones, and get paid. So am I getting... I'm, I'm getting a water filtration job? A break. Alex I'm Jones started with that, so it's okay. I'm a soldier. Which is why no one will refuse to pay. What do you say? Uh. Please? <sighs> well, let's get this over with. It's good enough for Alex Jones. It's good okay. enough for me. And while we're at it, I'll give you the grand tour. Listen, kid, I don't make excuses for committing eco-terrorism and putting you all out of work. I just accept the money to commit eco-terrorism. I've got a problem in that I'm always trying to explore everything. Where's the hidden room? The hidden room's got to be under... Yeah, it's under here. It'll be that downstairs... You know, that downstairs room where, like, there's secret equipment? Oh, can I change the music? This is the real question. Here we go. Use the jukebox to play your favorite tunes. All right. Tifa's theme obtained. I only have one. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll listen to Tifa's theme, I guess. I want to listen to that. Go ahead and keep whatever we collect. Final Fantasy Seeing Nine we music. Luggage. I'm guessing there's stuff you need to buy. Thanks. And don't worry. We'll pay you the difference after. Barrett's out making his rounds too. All right. As long as I get it all today, 
There's so many people who just don't take your eyes off it. Item shop. Today's special high potion. So you'd level out of using regular potions immediately. Oh, listen to that little remix there. Hey there. Here to change out your water filter. Tifa, baby, how you doing? Been waiting for you to. Wait, who's he? Cloud's in charge of collections. He'll take your money. Sounds like a pretty sweet gig. If you ever need someone to fill in, I'm your man. In your dreams, maybe. Huh? Cloud! Uh, since we're here, maybe we should do a little shopping. Suppose I could take a look. This is the tutorial for you to buy things. You could buy. Oh, look, you could buy. Yeah, you could buy the Prelude song for um, 50 gil. I guess I. How much gil do I have? 500. I could buy. So Phoenix down. Whoa. Fire materia, ice materia, lightning materia, deadly dodge materia. I think I have some of those. Oh, we'll buy it. All right. Thanks. If you're ever in the market for anything else, drop on by. Especially if Teeth is with you. We'll see you around. That was some really okay. awkward facial Let animation know there. The next needs changing. It's okay though. Can't help but like, oh, well, that's that's not absolutely perfect. It's like, who cares? All the items you can want, straight from the plate. Hmm? He's a regular. Stock up here, and he might throw in a freebie or two. For you, maybe. Well, oh, yeah. You could try being a little nicer. To get free shit? Not my style. <laughs> Our next stop is Stargazer Heights. Landlady is a client. Just met her. Then you know what to expect. Remember, she's a good friend of Avalanche, so be nice. Yeah, Darkspawn Please. says, I'll say this, the hardcore fans won't have to worry when it comes to PC. Get ready for those Tifa mods. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is going to be like naked mods, too. That's why I actually can't stream Marwind, is there's I accidentally installed a mod that when you, when you rip the clothes off people, off of dead bodies, it makes them naked. It's like, uh, hey, Marl. somehow remove that one. For ya. Tifa, my dear, dear girl. Oh, what's he doing here? Working? Be nice. <laughs> Cloud's helping me with collections. You better take care of her. <laughs> I'm pretty good at taking care of myself, you know. They're that probably already I'm making them, yeah. Still better him than you. <laughs> No charm, no so wit, I remember this mod no <laughs> called Nude Raider back in the nineties. Nice. Back during, back you during the nineteen nineties. If you had the low. PC version of Tomb Raider, you could you get this mod, anything, and it was really I'm hard to get, to you know, because to download right? it on the internet took that like three you. hours. Now, your money. Thanks, Marl. And it would make uh, make Laura Croft naked with with her like twelve. 12 polygon body. Take and break at a rest spot recovers all your HP. Okay. Your own bed. Blue benches next to vending machines in other locations. Okay. Don't you still have work to do? Well, go on then. Get back to it. All right. Tifa, where are we going next? Morrow's great. She, she does run like a girl, though. You been here a while now? Five years, give or take. Ow. Uh, but Absolutely. never mind that. We've got to get you your money. Last stop is the weapon store. Again, they're, they're they're fudging the time. You know, everybody's they're giving you like no certain numbers on time because it's it's going to be part of that reveal later on. You just take note of that. Hey, that last filter didn't do shit. We're so sorry about that. Hopefully, this one will work better. Save your excuses and get out. All right. If you could just settle your bill, we'll be on our way. The hell? You charging me for your busted-ass goods? My associate handles payment disputes. 
Think you can mosey up in here and have it your way? Smash him. Pretty please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Two hundred gill of tame. Give me two hundred dollars. Why not take a gander? It's basically weapons. organized crime right here. When will Barrett be back with the rest? Before we open up tonight. It'll be a while yet, so what do you want to do? Don't really know. In that case, I've got a suggestion. Wanna hear it? If you're serious about becoming a merc, then you're going to need to start making connections. It's not what you know, but who you know, you know? Hmm. Yep. For life she sways girl. like a girl. Yep. Connections get you jobs. Jobs build your rep. And more rep gets you better connections. How do I start? Hmm. Why not help out the neighborhood watch? They're mostly volunteers, but you'll get to know people. Yeah, okay. Didn't see anybody at the office, so let's head up top. Yeah, um, girls run the way they do, and they throw the way they do due to for physiological reasons. It has to do with like the way their hips are constructed and their um, like their shoulders are constructed. It's kind of an interesting thing. I found even like little girls routinely quote throw like girls, and little boys throw like boys. They throw different from each other. Even early on, they're physiologically just uh, different enough to that it makes a difference. All right, what am I doing here? Am I going in here? Okay. Huh. Didn't know you were holding down the fort. Huh? Oh, hey, Cloud. Um, Looking to join the neighborhood watch? That depends. <laughs> what does this neighborhood watch do? Uh, lots of stuff, really. Charlie Sheen there. Our top priority is taking care of any beasts that wander into town. That and teaching the locals how to defend themselves. Like they say, the only one who will look out for you is you. Cloud's a great fighter, but only we know that. If no one knows him, no one will hire him. Thought if he joined the watch, he could get his name out there. That would work for everybody. Truth be told, we could really use your help. We can't pay you in kill, but we'll work something out. For example... Aha! What about your sword? I could mod it for you. No thanks. It's fine just the way it is. What? You some kind of purist? I know I'd never pass up a chance to improve my gear. Come on. At least let me show you how it's done. All right. We've got some crafting in here. Dialogue doesn't sound too anime. Good stuff. I don't know what anime dialogue sounds like. <laughs> Begin tutorial. You can upgrade weapons and unlock weapon skills through weapon upgrades. First, select the character whose weapon you like to upgrade. Press X to select the Buster Sword. All right. Whoa. Let's come back in Final Fantasy 13 here. Unlock weapon skills. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. What do we have? Attack up. Uh, magic attack up. Max HP up. And enhanced punisher. Hundred HP. All these are good. Which one should we do? I don't know what anime dialogue sounds like. It's best if you don't. No man should. I've watched anime, but I'm not sure what anime dialogue means. It's like, I guess it's bad. I don't know. Uh, I think enhanced Punisher is probably the worst of the lot. So we'll probably just do like attack up or let's do attack up. Yeah. There we go. Bam. And well, I guess we could do two. So we already did that one. I guess we can do another one. Magic attack. All right. So we have to be done there. Buster core. All right. 
Alright. There we go. Always winning with Charlie Shireen Sheen's around. So he'd have us believe. Or his brother, Emilio Estevez. Did you guys know they're brothers? Estevez is their real last name. Okay. All right, gotcha. No, I don't. I don't want to do this again. No, nope. get me out of here. What time is it? I need to. Probably need to step off here pretty soon. I'm getting late. I'm tired. Did what I wanted to, which is play game after after working. So, all right. Okay. All set. Needless to say, you'll have to try it out to appreciate the difference. Thanks. All right. Next, we should go kill some beasts, right? I'll do you one better. Spread the word to everyone who listen about the new Merkin town. Between him and Wedge, there isn't anyone they don't know. I'll march through the streets singing your praises, even on an empty stomach. So, where are these monsters? Scrap Boulevard. Good hunting. Hey, Cloud, I'll come with. No, I've got this. But you don't know the way, do you? We don't. <laughs> sure thing. I know these streets better than anyone. All right. I think I'm going to I'm going to close it up there tonight, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Anime for me is like Batman. I like and dislike it at the same time. All right. I got Tifa in the party. No. Wait. Save. What do you think of Tad Williams or any of his books? I don't think I've read them. Uh, I meant to say earlier about the upper and lower world. You mentioned the game Kodor. Yeah, Kodor did that with with the upper city, lower city in that. Uh, yeah, in Terrace, I loved it. Actually, I wrote a whole screenplay that had that as like a big theme. It's like people live at the top of this infinite city and they escape downwards into it, kind of like Logan's Run, and it gets like weirder and weirder as you go. Um, Maybe I'll turn it into a book sometime, but I wrote it with Matt Wellman, my, my brother-in-law, so uh, we never really produced it in anything. But yeah, I, I always like that idea. It's, it's a real descent into madness idea, too. So you like, get further away from the pristine city, you get into darker dregs down here. People like just live out of the sun. It's, it's a great dystopian idea. Yeah, Adelita's kind of like that, too. I, this this probably is influenced more by Gunham, which uh, is the Alita manga. Then um, we really realized when it came out, this Gunham was like I think way older than this. I'm not sure how old, but uh, I think it was probably pretty influenced by it. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and hanging out, and uh, I will uh, I will see you guys next time.